Let's take a look at an example of how we might graph a cosine function. Now this function's a little bit tougher than the ones that we've seen before because I have an extra number in here. Okay? Note that I can factor out this 3 inside this cosine here and write 2 times cosine. If I factor this 3 out of the parentheses, I've got 3 times x minus pi over 3. Okay? So that's what I want to do first. I'm going to factor that 3 out. Now notice what I've got going on here. I've got several things going on. Certainly I've got a horizontal shift or a phase shift to the uh, right pi thirds units. Okay? Now what does this 3 mean? Well, that 3 is going to affect our period. Remember, the period of cosine x is 2 pi. This is from a previous lecture on period. The period of cosine bx is 2 pi over b. Okay? So this b is our 3 in this case. So the period of this function is 2 pi over 3. Okay? Now what else do we have going on here? Well, we have a stretch of a factor of 2, and we have a vertical translation up one unit. So we have a lot of things going on, so we have to make sure we know how to attack this problem properly. So I went ahead and factored our 3 out. It's the same exact problem, okay, but I factored out the 3. Now let's go through the steps. All right, the first thing we obviously need to do is sketch cosine x. That's going to be our base function, and that's something that we know how to do. But we already figured out the period. The period was going to be 2 pi over 3, okay? So it's going to make a complete pass in an interval of 2 pi thirds. And then we're going to do the phase shift next. We're going to shift that to the right uh, pi thirds units. Then we'll determine the amplitude. We'll stretch it by a factor of 2. And finally, we'll shift up one unit. All right, so let's go through this. Number one, let's sketch the graph of cosine x. And I've done all this on uh, a graphing calculator to save us a little bit of time. And I'll explain what we're doing each time. All right. So here's the cosine function. Remember, it starts at 0 here, 0 and 1. These are increments of pi halves. Okay. Now, the next thing we wanted to do, we determined the period was 2 pi over 3. Okay. So cosine is going to make a complete pass in an interval of 2 pi thirds, or it's going to make three passes in an interval of 2 pi. So in other words, it's going to have to look something like this. It's going to be a little quicker, right? It's got to do this three times on our interval. If this is a little hazy, go back and review the lectures on period. So there is cosine 3x. All we've done, we determined the period. It's going to have to make a complete revolution on an interval of 2 pi over 3. So notice. From 0 to 2 pi, it makes one complete revolution, 2, 3. So this point right here would be 2 pi thirds, 4 pi thirds, 2 pi, etc. All right. So that was the second thing we did. I want to go slow so you understand this. Let's go back. We first graph cosine x. Okay. The next thing we do is graph cosine 3x. OK. So now we're to here. Now what was step 3? Well, step 3 was to take this function okay, and horizontally shift it, or have a phase shift, to the right pi thirds units. So we're going to take our function, and we're just going to shift it over pi thirds. So this point here. This maximum point is going to be over right in here somewhere. Okay, So we're going to have a little shift. <clears throat> so notice we took our point here. We shifted over to the right pi thirds units, and we get our shift. So there's the graph 
of y equals or cosine 3, that was the period, and the phase shift was to the right pi thirds. Okay. Try to follow along and do this by hand. You can always stop the uh, lecture and put it on pause. All right, what was the next step? Well, we've graphed cosine, we did the period, and we shifted it to the right, and now we have to do the amplitude. Now, amplitude is 2. We're going to multiply every corresponding y value by 2. So it's just going to take all these points, and they're going to stretch them. This one's going to go up, this one's going to go up, these will go down, etc. So when I multiply it by 2, I have the exact same graph, except it's just stretched by a factor of 2. There it was. And we multiply everything by 2, and it stretches. All right. And then we're almost done. All right, so we graph cosine. We did the period. We sh phase shifted to the right. We stretched. And now the last thing we do, remember, the last thing we always do is that vertical. So all these points are going to go up one unit. So this point will go here. These points will go up one. And I get my final graph. Okay. These are much nicer looking graphs than the ones I can do anyway. Um, you might want to review this again. Well, let's go back one last time and remember what everything means. Okay, the number here, that determines the period or how long it's going to take for the function to repeat itself. Okay, then we phase shifted and we multiplied all the y values by a factor of 2 and then we vertically stretched up one unit and we get the finished graph that looks something like that.